James, we can get a quick time. The uh, conversation that you had with St. Paul last week after the Southern Eagles, yep. it ended up becoming a different story. If he described it as a misinterpretation of the situation, is that how you would describe it as well? Yeah, I mean, for, for us, I had a 10 minute conversation with Saquon and I just assumed and connected dots that weren't there. All those conversations went through his agent. Um, and, I, you know, obviously, again, I made a comment for three minutes that was misinterpreted, but by no means was it how it was portrayed. James, you've got missing Andy for a couple of weeks now. How's that energy that he's brought? Can you talk about yeah, I think the biggest thing that you guys have heard me talk about in the past of, of being the head coach of the offense or the head coach of the defense or special teams or by position, um, and I think he's done a really good job of that. There's a ton of time of explaining the why, which in 2023 I think is really important. Um, I think student athletes and young people will do the same things that we did in the 90s and the 80s. Uh, they just want to know why, and I think Andy's doing a really good job of explaining the why um, and teaching football and and really getting everybody pulling the rope in the same direction and excited about what we're going to be able to accomplish uh, on offense this year. So uh, it, it's, it's been good so far, and I know the staff's enjoying it as well, and so are the players. So is it more about teaching than installing right there? Say that again. Is it more about teaching than installing? No, it's both. Offense? I mean, the teaching is the installing, right? But instead of just installing a play, it's why are we running this play and how does this play complement these other plays? So the, the why goes hand in hand with the install, if that makes sense. James, with all three new coordinators, how important is it to actually get on the field? I mean, I'm sure you guys talked a lot and have discussions, but to get the players working under these guys out here. Yeah, I think I think it's really important. Um, but like I've mentioned already, you guys before, I think really the time that the coaches spent working through all the details and um, what what needed to change and what didn't have to change from a terminology and from a philosophical standpoint, um, I think that was probably time well spent if that makes sense uh, but then yeah i think getting out here um tom has his way um andy has his way and i'm a big believer just being authentic and true to who you are um but that, i think you know when you follow brent pry that's challenging you got to come in with confidence you got to be comfortable in your own skin when you follow manny diaz you got to be confident with that and you got to be comfortable in your own skin and I think I think in a very very short period of time I think the guys have you know connected with them um, and right now we're flying around and, and playing with a ton of confidence on defense which is great to see. James, James. has the um, green dot rule of communication changed anything you might want to do on defense? Who has to be on the field? Have you gotten to that point at all yet? No, because what happened is this rule got changed so late that the company couldn't really get it out to all the schools in the country they could only get out three so you got to decide how you're using those three um so we, we're doing two quarterbacks and one guy on defense typically a middle linebacker one day it's it's kobe next day it's elston so it's not ideal we're able to get some work at it right now but it's not like we can treat it game like where all three of your mics have it all three of your quarterbacks have it or so on and so forth so um i think the other thing is interesting thing is all this thing got pushed because of the whole sign stealing and for the offenses that are no huddle it doesn't change them at all because you still got to get the information to the wide receivers how do you do that yes signal so it doesn't really solve that issue now do i think we should have had helmet communication the whole time yes do i think we should have been able to have tablets I, we go to high school games they got tvs on the sideline and we can't have you know a tablet so um I, I think they're they're good changes but i don't know if they necessarily are solutions to some of the challenges that have been out there that actually got the rule passed if that makes sense James, we've seen JB getting some work at left tackle with Drew not available. We saw mostly at guard last year, but can you speak to his versatility and where he is year three with you guys? Yeah, he really always um, has done that for us in practice. Um, 
you know, again, creating that flexibility as, as much as you possibly can. Um, obviously, it's magnified, so you're seeing more of it because with Shelton out. Um, but yeah, he's a guy that we think has the ability, the physicality to be a guard and the athleticism to be a tackle. Um, and has done a really nice job for us. So um, we try to create as much of that flexibility as we possibly can. But he's the guy that I think it's realistic with that actually could go in and, and play at a high level at both positions. Coach, cool. you mentioned like how your defense is flying around. What do you like about what you see from the offense? I just, I just see, uh, I just see a lot of fight. I think our offense is challenging our defense. I think they're really emotionally uh, invested in having fun with it at practice. Um, we're doing a ton of different things in terms of how it presents. Not a whole lot of different for our guys. The run game is pretty much the same. It hasn't changed a whole lot. There's a few wrinkles that I think you guys are aware of already, but besides that, it's pretty much our run game. But um, the way things present, I think are more challenging for our defense. And again, I just think Andy taking the time of talking about why we do things and how we want to practice and how we want to play games, I just think there's more total buy-in because of understanding, if that makes sense. Coach, you and a lot of former players here last week for Pro Day and whatnot. How much do they get to interact with the team at all? And where did the, how do the players react to their being around? Yeah, it was awesome. We had a ton of guys. We actually still got guys here right now. I think Tangelo and Castro Fields are still here. Um, Saquon, Trace, and Grant Haley spoke to the team after practice. Um, just been, it's just been really good. I think whenever you can have those guys back is great. Uh, I think it's magnified. As we all know, this isn't the easiest place to get to. Um, so the fact that guys come here and have a great time and are comfortable and are around our players and are in the weight room, uh, I think it's a ton of value. I see them sitting in there eating, talking to our guys. Um, so it's it's really good. It's really good. And then Pro Day, we got a bunch of Pro Day guys like Olu that have decided after Pro Day they're going to stay up here until the draft, uh, which I think that's great as well. You know, we started the tradition, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago. I take those guys all out uh, for dinner Pro Day. Uh, with dinner and, and, and some other things. And um, and that's been a really cool thing as well, to be able to break bread with them kind of in a different setting when they're no longer playing for me anymore. And that's that's been a really cool deal, um, you know, for us with the players. So it's, it's great having those guys around. Coach, what's impressed you the most about A.J. Harris and Jalen Kimber since they've been on campus? Yeah, I just think that their maturity and their presence, they, you know, Kimber's played a ton of football. Um, as you guys know, AJ was a very, very highly recruited young man. Um, and both of them, I think, have adjusted really well. They both adjusted extremely well. I think they're enjoying themselves. Um, I've had a bunch of meetings with those guys. Um, and I think they're happy and they're enjoying themselves and playing well. Kimber's situation in terms of kind of late in his career is different than AJ's situation, but I, I've been very, very pleased with their adjustment and they seem happy, except for today, when last week it was 70 degrees and today the, <laughs> the snow came back for one kid Here from Alabama, one kid from Texas. It's kind of like a psych, go. not gone right yet. James, last week you said that <clears throat> there's a number of guys competing at that nickel spot to stay on the secondary. Yep. Through two, a couple of padded segments, how does that spot work? You want the depth chart. No, just wondering. Yes, you do. That's exactly what you're asking. They would love to have um, it. Yeah, good. we got some guys at safety that are competing. We got some guys at corner that are competing for the job. Um, it's it's too early to tell. I mean, we literally have had um, two padded practices. So for me to sit here and tell you I know where we're at, I, I, I don't. I do think the combination of being able to have Jay Reed, Zaki, and KJ Winston all at the field at the same time um, is is exciting, and and I would say that um, Zachy right now is playing his best football by far, um, and it's not us; it's just maturity. The light's gone on for him, and he understands 
what he has to do on a consistent basis to be the type of player that he wants to be. And it's pretty cool to see. But one of the things that I enjoy the most about doing this now for as long as I've been able to do is watching these guys' journeys and, and when they start to figure it out. So it's pretty cool. James, uh, we're going to get Sal in a matter of minutes here. Him coming back, what did that mean for your offense, for your offensive line? And was that one that you figured he was going to be back? Or did you were you waiting until early January like a lot of this? Yeah, we had a we had a, um, with all almost all these guys, we had conversations that had a pretty good idea what they were going to do. Sal was pretty open and transparent with us that that he was coming back, and there wasn't a whole lot of drama associated with it. Um, he felt like you know he needed another year to do what he wanted to do, and for us to do what we want to do as a team. Um, and really, is handling it well right now. He's really handling it well right now. So taking on more of a leadership team, which is cool to see. It's taking on more of a leadership role in the team, which is cool to see. Um, but no, that wasn't necessarily a surprise. Most of the guys were pretty good with us, and I was asking them and the coaches to make sure they sat down and had conversations, them and their parents, to make sure we are all on the same page. And then the guys that were still trying to decide kind of help advise them. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you.